Let's take a look at the new Zero Breeze Mark II, and then we'll start it up and take a look at the different functions. I do have an original Zero Breeze air conditioner, which I no longer use because I had it in my vehicle one day and it burned up. I heard a pop, and the whole vehicle filled with smoke, and that was the end of my original Zero Breeze. So I have my fingers crossed, and I'm hoping for the best with this new updated version. Overall, the packaging on the Mark II seems to be more secure than the original Zero Breeze. So that's a good start. A huge improvement on the Mark II are these separate inlet and outlet ducts. I'm going to be using this as I did with the original in an enclosed vehicle. With the original, you could only port out the hot air coming out the back. You couldn't bring in fresh air from outside. So with this new model and these split rear hoses in the in the back, I won't have to leave a window open anymore, which brought hot air in and kind of defeated the purpose of having the AC on. Here's another great feature of the Mark II is the ability to control it with a remote control. The manual actually has some good information in it, and it's written in understandable English. I noticed right away that the power brick that comes with the Mark II is considerably larger than with the original Zero Breeze. I think a big part of the problem with the original was that it ran on 12 volts, so I'm hoping that this switch to 24 volts will fix some of those issues. Speaking of the original here, it is next to the Mark II. You can see the Mark II is considerably larger than the original. Another big improvement on the Mark II is being able to attach the duct to the outlet. Because the air conditioner has to sit flat, this duct will allow you to point the air anywhere you want, and the extension lets you move it around quite a bit. The two screws that come in the box are used to attach the adapter to the front of the unit. On the back is the port for the drain hose and the electrical input. Now, unfortunately, I already found something broken on a piece of mine, this little tab right here on this adapter. I couldn't find it in the box, so it looks like it was broken off pre-packaging. This rear adapter has a little quick release right here, which I will later find out doesn't quite hold it on very well. The broken tab may have some part to play in that, but the little fingers that attach up in the top slots don't really hold very well. The length of these inlet and outlet ducts on the back give you a lot of options for installing the air conditioner. At 46 inches, you shouldn't have any problem finding fresh air and being able to purge that warm air. Here are some specs on the back of the power adapter. Input is 100 to 240 volts, 3.5 amps, and the output 24 volts, 10 amps. Something else you see there that I had to figure out myself on the original is the pinout for the power plug. 
For those of you that are going to be making your own power cords like I will be, that information is accurate. So this air intake grate on the front looks to be removable and cleanable, but like the tab on the adapter on the back, it was already starting to crack and it wasn't doing anything when I pushed it. So for the time being, I'm not going to mess with it because I have a feeling if I push any harder, it's going to break off. Here are those holes in the front that I mentioned for screwing on the outlet adapter. It looked to be a couple rubber plugs in each hole that just need to be popped out to screw these screws in. Here's the drain hose that can be attached to the back to move any condensate that forms inside the unit somewhere else. I live in a dry climate and never used the hose on the original air conditioner, so I don't think I'll be using this one. The remote control looks like it will control all the different functions of the air conditioner, and it does come with a battery pre-installed. So back to that power adapter pinout, it's showing that positive is coming out of number one and negative is coming out of number three. I'm going to be powering this through my Goal Zero Yeti 1000. This is the cable I made for the original air conditioner, but it's wired differently, so I'll have to rewire this plug. I'll put a link in the description where I found these plugs on Amazon. For anyone curious, and because I couldn't resist, I had to open up this plug and see what was going on in there. And number one to number three did give me 24.2 volts. So let's take a look inside and see what's going on in there. Inside it looks like we have four individual wires, two reds and two blacks. The reds are both attached to post number one and both blacks are attached to number three. So now I know how to wire up my custom plug that I plan on powering through a 12 volt to 24 volt boost converter from my lithium battery bank. Okay, let's plug it in and see how this thing works. There's a red LED on the back of the handle that turns blue once you turn on the unit. And a quick check with the manual shows that all I should have to do is press the power button to turn everything on. Before I do that, I wanted to get a temperature of the front end of the unit, which is looking like it's about 65 degrees, which was the ambient temperature in the room. And a press of the power button should get this thing fired up. One thing I noticed right away is that the fan takes quite a while to ramp up in speed. And like the original, this one does come with a light in front. The velocity of the air coming out of the front seems to be considerably more than the original Zero Breeze. Adding this duct on front concentrated the air even more. I think this is going to be permanently attached to mine as I'll be using it more as a spot cooler to cool me rather than cool a room. The buttons on the front are touch sensitive and don't actually move. Touching the up or down fan speed buttons results in a gradual increase or decrease of the fan speed.
The Mark II has something called strong mode, which according to the manual causes the air conditioner to work at full load. When I pressed the strong mode button, the fan speed decreased, which was kind of odd. I did notice a change in the way the compressor sounded and the air coming out of the outlet was considerably colder. There is a built-in thermometer on the front of the unit, which was showing 39 degrees at the outlet. I don't know how accurate that is, but the air coming out was very cold. Granted, this was at a 64 degree ambient temperature in the room, and I'll be interested to see how this performs in a sealed up 95 degree vehicle. On the back, the intake air comes in on the unit's left side, and the hot air exhaust comes out on the right side. The exhaust port was showing about 83 degrees. I don't know what the purpose is for the fan speed decreasing when the strong mode button is pressed, but when I remembered that it did slow down, I turned it back up and I was surprised at how cold the air was and how forceful the air was coming out of the front of this thing. If this thing doesn't catch fire like the old one, I think I'm going to be very happy with this purchase. So for the other controls on the front, we have the fan button, which will shut off air conditioning and just run the fan. The strong mode, which we've already gone over. The normal AC button. The sleep mode, which according to the manual causes the air conditioner to run at low load and the light button. There's not only more air volume coming out of the Mark II as compared to the original Zero Breeze, but the spread seems to be larger too. Something else I noticed, there seems to be two streams of air, a left stream and a right stream, and right down the middle there's kind of a dead spot. So I eventually turned it back onto normal mode and the thermometer on the front showed 42 instead of 39. And I ran the AC this first time out for about 20 minutes. To turn it off, just a quick tap of the power button. All the lights on the front go out, the rear light turns red, and the motor slowly winds down. Something I forgot to test until later was the remote control. All of the remote control buttons worked well for all of the functions and I think I'm going to use this thing often. This footage is from another video you can check out where I powered my Mark II from my Goal Zero Yeti 1000 lithium battery attached to a 200 watt solar suitcase. I was very happy with the results, as you'll be able to see in that video. In conclusion, I can say over the short period of time I've been able to test this so far that I'm happy with the improvements. The air coming out of the front seems to be considerably colder than the original Zero Breeze. The velocity of air coming out of the front seems to be considerably greater. And if this thing continues to do what it's doing, I think I'm going to be happy with it. And that's it from my unboxing and initial test of my Zero Breeze Mark II.